In this film I'm going to show you a terrific tip that's really going to help you improve your portraits. Your family and friends are not going to believe how great they look in the photos. You're really going to flatter them and they're going to wonder how you did it. This tip is one of my all-time favourites because it's so simple to do, you don't have to change any settings on the camera and you get absolutely fantastic results. Professional photographers call this top shade or sometimes open shade. Now when you're taking a portrait and you want it to look a cut above a standard kind of uh, snapshot, the most important thing is that you want nice light on the subject's face, a nice soft even light. Now you may have seen in previous films how the sun can ruin what would have otherwise been a lovely photo. The sun can create harsh shadows on people's faces, shiny bits on their cheeks and foreheads and make them squint. But even on a lovely day like today where we've got cloud cover and an absolutely perfect light for portraits, there's still a problem. God gave us these things called eye sockets and they're fantastic for protecting our eyes but unfortunately they make our eyes look a little bit darker if the light is coming directly from overhead and they can also create slight shadows underneath the eyes. Now the eyes are the most important thing when you're taking a portrait, especially for close-ups. You want the eyes to have colour in them and to look sparkly and maybe to have a little catch light in them and top shade gets around this problem. Now as you can see my eyes have practically no colour in them and that's because the light is coming directly from overhead and my eye sockets are making my eyes go a little bit darker. Now top shade gets over this problem and the idea is that you hide some of the light coming from above so the only light is coming in from the side. Now to do this we use some kind of canopy or awning or it could even be a porch of a house or maybe just even opening the front door of your house and having the subject stand just inside the front door. Anything that protects the light coming from above. So here we've got an old pavilion. It's a perfect example of top shade. Now okay it may not be the most attractive structure in the world but quite often for portraits that's not really necessary. You only need a small area behind the, uh, behind the subject. Now I'm going to walk underneath the pavilion and you should see a marked difference in the quality of the light on my face because the light is only coming from the front here. There's no light coming from above. So let's see how it looks. Now that we've got a close-up you can see the lovely quality of light on my face and this is due to the light coming from in front rather than from above. And you should be able to see the colour of my eyes now and the little catch lights in my eyes. So this is going to make all the difference to a portrait. Let's go and try it in practice now with a model. Right so we're going to use the pavilion now to take a picture of Lara and the light is covering, the, uh, the roof is covering the light coming down. So let's see how, how this looks. I'm going to use a compact camera for this. Yeah. <laughs> that looks really nice. We've also got the, uh, the shutters as a background which looks nice. Okay here's another example of top shade. They're just so easy to find, it's really easy to do. So here I've asked Lara just to step underneath that low roof there and we're going to see how the light looks. Again, just going to use a compact camera, so no fancy settings or anything. That looks great. We've got a nice red background there as well, which helps. Look at that, that's beautiful. Okay. So here's another example of top shade. Very simple, just open your front door and stand your subject inside the porch. Okay. If Lara comes forward you'll see that at one point it's going to be too, you see the sun's come out and it's going to be too bright but even if the sun wasn't shining that's still too far out. We need to go back in. Also if she went too far back in, so let's go, go a few feet back Lara, you can see as she goes back in the light uh, reduces on her face so you mustn't be too far in either. So it's just about two or three feet. I said just let's try this. So again just using a compact camera. That looks great. Beautiful. Right. Okay here we've got another example of top shade. We've got this tree with the branches coming right over Lara's face. Now you don't want to be too far underneath the tree, just on the very edge of it, otherwise the subject will go too, too dark. The sun's shining so we're also, I've also made sure that there's no speckled highlights on her face. Let's try taking a shot now, see how it looks. 
Brilliant. Children's area in the park. Now, one of the problems with top shade is that depending on the location, the background can go a bit dark, and that doesn't really do you any favours if the subject's got dark hair. If they've got lighter hair, then it's not so bad. But this time I've chosen an area where I know there's a lighter background. Let's see how this looks. Nice little smile, Lara, come on. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, the lighter background definitely helps, but you can't always get that with top shade. It depends on where you are. So don't forget top shade. Keep your eye out and look for locations where you can use it. That's all for now.